We love our land. It's our work, our passion, our home. The way we look at farming is best described in a Kenyan proverb. Treat the earth well. It wasn't given to you by your parents. It is lent to you by your children. We live on a grazing property at Bombala, close to the snowy mountains, in the furthest southeast pocket of New South Wales, where on a, our property is about 4,200 hectares. We run mainly merino sheep and Angus cattle. This year we marked 100 years of the family at Gunningra. My husband, Charlie Maslin, is the Brains Trust and Engine Room. Our aim is to run a profitable farming business while improving and enhancing the landscape's natural resources, namely soil and water. Fifteen years ago, we changed the way we manage our farming operation, and these are the reasons why. The only certain thing about our rainfall is that it's uncertain. It's erratic, it can't be depended upon season by season or year by year. We get floods, but we also get long dry times. This means highly volatile production costs. Wool production costs can double from year, from, from year to year, and cattle production costs can triple. In dry times, we would end up with depleted pasture cover, which of course increased the risk of land degradation and erosion. They were our problems. So this scenario presented the following challenges as we saw it. How to conserve water, how to protect our topsoil, how to manage our stock to preserve healthy pastures, and importantly, how to control and heal erosion in our creeks. We brought in a few major changes. First, we changed from set stocking, that is grazing all the paddocks all the time, to rotational grazing, that is putting the stock in big mobs and moving them frequently so as to rest paddocks and allow pastures to recover. Charlie went off and did an RCS uh, grazing for profit course to uh, learn the ropes about how to do that. We decided to adjust the number of animals to suit the amount of feed available each season. This sometimes means cutting sheep and cattle numbers to a quarter of the maximum carrying capacity. We changed our stock mix from 80% sheep to roughly half sheep and half cattle, which is gentler on the country. The last 5% comprises a new enterprise, our four-legged weed eradicators, a hungry herd of goats. Goats are a powerful weapon in our war against weeds. They much prefer to eat thistles and a range of other weeds instead of grass. This means they provide a natural, eco-friendly alternative to using chemical herbicides. Next, we address problems with our creek system. How to retain our most precious resource, fresh water, in the landscape. First, we improve grass cover as a result of resting paddocks. Good grass cover helps rainfall infiltrate the soil. It also stabilises topsoil so that rainstorms can't wash it away. Once into the creek, we needed to slow down the flow of water. Inspired by natural sequence farming methods, we installed leaky weirs in the creek beds. These weirs soften the erosive power of those infrequent but potentially damaging rain events. The weirs also trap precious sediment and hold the water long enough to percolate into the soil instead of rushing headlong out to sea, as it always did before. There's still a long way to go, but we now have a healthier creek system. It acts like a sponge, absorbing rain as it falls and conserving water for the inevitable dry years. We now hear a chorus of frogs at many spots along our creeks, and the habitat for our population of swans and platypus now, fortunately, seems more assured. So, what of the future? Well, our pasture cover has improved from around 30% bare ground to currently less than 5%. The overall health of our animals has improved due to a lower worm burden, and that's to do with the rotation of grazing. The man hours we spend doing stock work has reduced by 40%. This gives us more time to devote to land rehabilitation. With land care, we've planted almost 50,000 trees the tree corridors provide vital habitat for native birds and animals, as well as windbreak shelter for our stock. 
we've learned that the challenge of healing our eroded creek system is not impossible. In this dry continent, we now see the potential to re-establish the resilient natural water systems that existed before the arrival of white men. We'll continue to manage the stock the way we do now. The key is being flexible, allowing the amount of pasture we have to tell us how many stock to graze, and so limit the expenditure on having to buy feed. The result of the new management process has been increased profit stability, even with often decreased rainfall. We're very proud, Charlie and I, to be part of this project. Outcome Australia's Soils for Life program is showcasing the many practical ways that farmers around Australia are addressing the challenge of, pre of preserving our landscape. Lastly, Charlie and I want to acknowledge the contribution to Australian farming sustainability provided by Michael Jeffrey and the Outcomes Australia team, and Simon. They've achieved the mammoth task of drawing together practical ideas from around the nation, ideas that will help assure farming sustainability for future generations. Thank you.